today we're going to tear down an engine out of what many would consider to be one of the best generations of Ford trucks. The old body styler OBS trucks 1992 through 1997 had some of the most reliable Ford power plants ever offered. The 300 straight six, you can't kill those. The 302 five liters, those are very good engines. The 5.8 351s, the 460 big blocks, and of course your IDI, IDI turbo, and power strokes all came from that generation. All very reliable engines. We're not really going to talk about the transmissions back, no. But unfortunately, these trucks don't exist much here in the Midwest anymore. Salt has killed them all off for the most part, and finding a good engine out of one is a challenge, let alone an engine that I know is bad. Most of these got thrown in the scrap pile a long time ago, but thankfully, the yard that I bought this engine from inventoried this as a core engine and sold it to me complete. That's awesome. That It doesn't get any easier than that. I didn't even have to go hunting for it. It was actually delivered here. This is a 5.8 liter 351 Windsor out of a 96 F250. It has 210,000 miles on it and it was inventoried and dismantled 17 years ago. It's been on the shelf for 17 years. So I don't know if it was good when it went onto the shelf, but it is certainly not now because it is completely locked up. The 351 Windsor dates back to the 1960s and it was offered all the way up through the 1997 model year. This is the final iteration of 351. This produced 210 horsepower, 325 foot pounds of torque. And I know if you got one in a Lightning, they make more power. Or if you had a California emissions, it makes a little bit less and they changed based on the year. This is out of a 96 with federal emissions. It makes the numbers I quoted. In 1997, this engine was replaced by the immediately well-received 5.4 liter modular V8, which I guess a lot of people had complaints when it first came out. And then when the three valve came out, people started loving the two valves again. Eh. I, my point is people look through rose-colored glasses a lot. I'm sure these engines back in their day had lots of common problems that seemed to be really terrible in their time. No, these were good engines. Oil leaks. Lots of oil leaks. Like any good detective, the first thing we need to do is substantiate the claims as to why this engine is bad, so we're going to try to turn it over. That's the bolt. Okay, so it's locked up. Yep, it's locked up. First thing we're going to do is pull the plugs. Seems to be missing a couple plug wires, but sitting on the shelf for that long, who knows what could happen. Well, don't mind the broken plug. I think that got knocked off when this engine was delivered or stored. Now, these Bosch Platinums don't look too terrible except for that one. If that's any indicator as to why this engine won't turn, I might be in for a long night. Looks like it's got a little bit of rust, but I don't see any smashed tips. Any, nothing really would lead me to believe there's any malice in the combustion palace with this engine. Now we need to start taking this thing apart. I have sprayed this engine down with some penetrator so that most of these bolts would have a fighting chance to come out without breaking. Fingers crossed that everything comes apart, but if you, if you look at it, it's, uh, it's a little on the rusty side. Just for good luck, it's gonna be fine. I've got my small wrench on it. <laughs> uh, I moved my camera back for safety of the camera. That's what I meant. I'm gonna break my engine stand. Ooh, I moved it. Nope, I broke the EGR pipe. It's fine. And I'll show you why. We're just gonna finish her off. I think it's coming off now after it ruined itself on the truck that I rescued uh, probably about six months ago, maybe longer. This came right out and my truck was rusty. Hey look, it came off. You can definitely tell the EGR valve was hit really hard. It must have laid over on that side. We're going to start to unbolt some of this emissions equipment. Well, that broke. Used rubber hose sympathizers look the other direction. Ooh. 
Before we pull the plenum, we need to start disconnecting some of the electrical. This harness is already very much destroyed, but I'm still gonna try to be nice. Now it's about time to unbolt the upper plenum. This is much easier when the engine's not in the car. This middle one is a T40. All right, let's see if I missed anything. Yep, there's a bracket over here. And then we just have some, looks like a rubber hose. Yes. I could have used that. And we're off. Oh, it's certainly not looking good. I think the next thing I'm going to do is get the distributor cap and wires out of the way and then we'll, we'll just pull the distributor out too. Just try to clean this up a little bit. We'll tackle the harness after that. It's got a newer rotor in it. Lots of corrosion. Lots of corrosion. Like you just... Hopefully this comes right out. Nope, that's gonna be a fight. Let's spray some penetrator around the base. Let that soak for a little bit while we'll work on the fuel rails and injectors. See what else we can get disconnected here. We're getting places, I don't know where. Now it's time for Old Blue to help us out. He's been taking a nap. It's gonna be nice and gentle. Well, so much for the idea I had. Rails came off the injector, we can pull this off. Okay, so we've got, yes, we have a yes. I dealt with this problem on the truck that I fixed up. I use air quotes on the fixed up part. The truck I got running a few months ago. I don't know what the best course of action is. I'm just gonna unplug these. And if I tear up the clips, I'm sorry. You can buy new clips for not much money. It's not like the harness is good anyway. Oops, sorry guys. I get lucky and have the injector pull out, but nope. At this point, I think this mess. Oh, we still have another connector. Hey, we're off. Next, we need to persuade this distributor. I'm not gonna hit it too hard, guys. We're getting somewhere. Look at that. Now we should be able to come up, right? Eee, that's not good. Super rusty. Now the lower manifold, and this is one of the more expensive parts on this engine. This is the one I hope that we can salvage. So I'm gonna be very careful with these bolts. They've already been sprayed down. We just hope we don't break any off. So far, so good. Mmm, that doesn't feel good. And then there's this thing. The bolt's right underneath it. Let's just work on some other bolts. We're doing okay here, but we're not doing great. There's still a stud back here on this corner. Let's see if we can't. Help this out here. No, we're gonna have to pull the exhaust manifold to get that one off. But I'm more concerned with how we're gonna get that bolt out and how we're gonna get that out. Probably gonna have to breathe on it a little bit. Penetrator. Let's just start zipping some bolts out of this. On the dipstick. 
two. Ooh, ooh, we might, we might not have a war on our hands. Hold on, hold on now. This should just lift off. Well, that's fun. How the, what the, I don't think you're supposed to pull it off with the uh, pipe on there, but that's what we're gonna do. Since we're already here, I, I'm gonna pull the dipstick tube. It's, it's gonna be fine. It's, ooh, that didn't sound good. You know what I haven't done? Check to see if there's oil in it. There's oil in it. Well, I guess we're gonna need to drain it here in a minute. Let's just get this tube out. It's gonna come right out. It's out. That wasn't too bad. It's fine. Oh, that was heavy. Let's, uh, let's just get this hose out of the way. Perfect. Now let's get this other rear intake manifold bolt. We're looking pretty okay so far. At this point, I'm still going to let that penetrator set up for a little bit. So we're going to unbolt the valve covers and take a look at the valve train. <laughs> this is going to be a bad time. Oh man, that's rusty. Gee, I didn't know the Titanic was powered by a 351. This is gonna be a, a long night, I feel. I'm sure this side will be better. I mean, could it be worse? Should I say that? I don't think I should say that. Let me go on an archeological dig to get the head of the bolt exposed. Yeah, it's a lot better. If only the other side looked like this. There's still some hints of moisture in here, but it is nothing like the other side. Well, it's time to try out my new toy. And I've, I've had this for a bit, I've used it a few times, and it turns out I no longer need to eat spicy foods to get bolts hot, because I have an induction heater. I'm just gonna set that on here. Let it cook for a minute. Oh, she's smoking now. You basically want to go till it's glowing white. I mean, no, don't go that far. You can just get it hot. Set that down. Let's give this a shot here. Oh, she's moving. We're going to spray some penetrator on it and then get it hot again. All right, let's try that. I think we're going to be okay. Ah, yes. I'm not gonna touch that. That's what these are for. Look at that bolt. That could have been bad. Let's see if we can get on this one here. Oh yeah. Let's see if we can't get this broke free. Ooh, that does not feel good. This pipe being in the way is also a problem, but let's get a better wrench. Oh man, I don't want to break this. Well, I got it moving, but it doesn't feel right. I don't, I don't, I think we broke it. Let's see, can, will this come out? No, uh oh, it's really wobbly. Oh no, broken. Well, that's a bummer. Hopefully it didn't hurt it, hurt the intake though. That's where the money is. The heads don't have a ton of value. So now we'll see, we'll pull the uh, lower manifold off and see if that comes off in one piece. Well, I still have two more bolts. I'm not really fearing these breaking off. These should be okay, right? You get the rest? I think that's it. I think the manifold is ready to come up. We're gonna be kind of gentle. Manifold is off. Well, 
Perfect. Well, as you can see, this is in pretty poor condition. It smells like a musty, wet, oily basement. I don't know that you guys know what that smells like, but it smells bad. Um, this engine's clearly set with moisture in or around it, or maybe it's set under the sea. We don't know, but let's take a look at these intake ports. Yuck. More yuck. None of these look good. And somehow they keep looking worse. It looks like the best looking one and that's not good. Man, the smell is just, I feel like I need a shower right now. Now, I guess we can unbolt the rockers and pull the push rods. Now oh, we got a clinger. Well, the ball end of the push rod that doesn't look terrible because it sat in water, they look okay. And all of the rocker arms also look okay. Now keep in mind, this is the good side, not the rusty side. Now it's time to crack the head bolts loose on the left hand bank. I'd like to say I don't have a pan under this thing because I, I like to live a little dangerously. These are cast iron heads, so should be fine. Should be fine. Should be, let me get a, let me get a little blue here. That's on there. We have a stuck head. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put a bolt or two back in it and we're gonna get a slightly larger bar. There we go, we just had to break the seal, that's all. Mmm, well that would explain why it doesn't turn. Let's take a look at this head gasket. Looks pretty good. I don't see any issues at all. The third cylinder back on this bank is the one where you can see the most amount of the bore. But look at all that beautiful cross hatching, I mean, that's the thickest rust we've seen on a cylinder wall ever, like ever. This is going to be a lot of fun to get apart. I'm having big block Chevy vibes here. Oh boy. I feel like this is a total waste of time, but we're going to do some science for the name of science. I, I can't tell a thing. Let's get some of this on there. That'll fix it right up. Like it never happened. We're going to let this sit for a few years and we'll come back later. Yuck. Can't really tell much other than lots of moisture sat in here. I mean, I believe that this sat on the shelf for 17 years. I just think that the entire shelf was underwater. Or maybe it was in a waterfall. Maybe it was flooded 10 times, we don't know. On to the right side cylinder head. This is the bad one, I think. What was that? I feel like I just shot something up, but maybe it was just a puff of rust. Push rods are coming with because they are one piece. That's a cool trick. So, bad. Super rusty, wouldn't reuse any of this stuff. Although, 
I've heard that there's some stuff called Evapo Rust or something like it. And if, if anybody's out there wants to send me any of it, I will use it on the channel to see how well some of this stuff cleans up. And one thing I noticed after I pulled the, the rockers off, we've got a valve that is not seated. So I kinda, I'll show you what we're gonna do to fix that. What you wanna do is just kinda smack it with a hammer. It's fixed. Now we can crack these head bolts loose. I'm going to thread this, this one in a little bit so that I can pop the seal and not drop the head. Let's try old blue here. Nope, we need the big bar. Just a little bump. That's all we need, I think. Mmm, yep. Somehow, you're not going to believe this, but this side's better. Maybe. Head gasket doesn't look blown. Looks good. Again, science. A perfect score. So the reason I say this is better is because this cylinder has very little rust and it looks really nice. Although, you see some marks on the piston? Those look weird. Looks like they all have that. Maybe that's casting. I don't think that would be marks from the valves. It doesn't look right. Let's look at the other side. Yeah, I can't tell anything. This side doesn't look like it has that stamping on it. They're also horrendously dirty, so I don't know. What left those marks? It's definitely in the aluminum part of the piston, but it looks so evenly distributed. I can't imagine valves doing that. The rust though, man. Are they using this as a water pump or something? Yikes. Cylinder head, about as you'd expect. If I were to bet anything, I would bet that these heads are gonna end up in the scrap bin. Just a hunch. All right, next we're gonna work on this water pump. I've heard that these bolts really never break ever. They never have trouble, and I'm being sarcastic. So we're gonna hope I have sprayed these down with some penetrator. That doesn't feel good. I think it's coming out though. Well, there's one. Mm, that feels so bad. That's gonna break. 1000% gonna break. We're gonna have to get some of these hot. Oh, we got two loose. That's three. I think those are the three that always come out. All right, let's see if we can get this pulley off first. Oh, hey, look. It looks like they sawed the fan off of it. Huh. I suppose you could do it that way. They did. I think the biggest problem is it it gets all corroded in that area. All right, that's, uh, let's give this a try here. Oh, it feels terrible. This is not gonna work. I don't know, guys. I think it's coming out. Oh yes. Yes. Yes, yes. I think it's probably just stuck in there now. I don't know if this is gonna be enough to get it out. Probably not, not even close. All right, well, we're just gonna leave that like that and we're gonna focus on the next one. All right, let's see if we can get lucky again. Oh man. That could have been a good sound. I think we're, we're going to be okay on this one. 
So no, well, the reason I hit this with a hammer is if I leave this under some sort of tension, the shocks may break free some of this rust and corrosion. Yep, we're getting this one out too. Let's get the impact and speed this process up. Look how rusty that is. Set that in the valley. There's the other one. The battle is not over yet. Cooking this one here. I like these to be uh, medium well. Oh man, that feels so bad compared to the other two and the other two felt bad. Oh man, I feel like this is a lost cause. Ooh, I, I heard a thing inside. I think it's frozen about right here. So I got a little too carried away with the induction heater. <sighs> Smells really bad. Oh man, I feel like it's gonna break. Definitely get more movement out of it. Oh! Could we be winning? I think we're winning, guys. That is success. I am so surprised that bolt came out. We still have one more. All right, I've had the induction heater on it for a minute. Probably at least a minute. Oh. Goodness, every time I start this, it feels impossible. We're moving, I think. Yes, no. Guys, I think we got it. Ha <laughs> ha yes! The bolts all came out. That's a, an amazing feat. Before we get the ones that we know we'll get out on the top off, we have a radiator hose to loosen up. Let's just get all these off here. All that's left. Easy street. Look at that. The water pump is off. Doesn't really feel that bad. It's all this stuff would clean up though. You guys, I am I can't explain to you how excited I am to get this water pump off intact. Look at that. Ford parts this is a replacement, a genuine Ford replacement part. This is, uh, I, I am so excited I got this off in one piece. Next, the crank pulley. It's a little rusty. Yeah, came right off. All right, I've got my puller set up. Hopefully this works. Perfect. We're gonna go ahead and get this mint condition oil filter off. Um, sorry guys, I don't know about cutting this one. Something tells me, I don't think that's in the cards. Looks like the cooler is loose too. That's interesting. Let's go ahead and pull these lifters out. I'm sure these will just slide right out. No problems whatsoever, right? Well, so far so good. We just did one. So 
The outside ones don't want to come out. No. Okay, we have four, five that are stuck. That's not so bad. Since they're stuck and these lifters have a flat section on them, you can use a wrench. In this case, it's a three quarter or 19 and get them to spin. And then you can pull them out. Worked really well on that one, but I'm not going to say this works every time, but it works most every time. One final lifter. Perfect. So aside from the rust, these lifters all look like they're in pretty good condition. All of the rollers feel good. Doesn't look like, well, that one doesn't feel good. That one's rusted solid but it hasn't been running that way. And that's really the good gauge of whether that was the failure or not. I don't think lifters not rolling after it sat in the ocean for a couple decades is a good indicator of what happened to this engine. The next thing we're gonna do is drain the oil. Eh, or I hope it's oil. We're gonna find out real quick. Uh, that, is, um, that is water. This is more like the precipitation pan. Underwater, yep. We might be dealing with a flood engine. Oh, there's some oil. Ooh, that's not good oil. We're gonna let that muck run out for a while. Ooh, it's kind of, it's kind of gray colored. I don't see a lot of metal in there. I'm kind of wondering if this thing drove into water at this point. So the stuff coming out of the pan is super ploppy. That's the best terminology I could come up with for this. I wouldn't call it a liquid or a solid. It's that in-between stage. I suppose we'll start pulling the pan. Let's get the big bolts out first. Now all the small ones. Hopefully this pan just lifts right off. It's definitely been beat up a little bit. It's got some dents. Oh, that's gross. So that's not good. I don't see large chunks of anything, but it does look like there might be a hole in the pan right there. Maybe this thing sat in water where it was stored. We really don't know yet. That's a yucky pickup. See, I like making family friendly videos. There's the oil pump. Hopefully we can get this apart. This is going to be a challenge. I was looking at this. I don't see any bent rods. Uh, maybe, I don't know. We'll know once we get it apart. For now, we're gonna turn this back over and we'll work on getting the cam out after we get the front cover off. We're not out of the woods yet. There's still more bolts to take out, but I think these aren't so bad. We're just gonna give them a little try here. Oh yeah. Let's try these over here. What's funny is the set of bolts to get the water pump and timing cover off, that set of bolts is actually worth money. If you'd like to buy them, I'll sell them to you. But wait, there's more. At this point, I think we're ready to start prying on this front cover. I'm sure it's gonna look beautiful behind this. Ugh. 
yeah, I don't know if beautiful is the word I'd use. Timing cover is decent. I don't know if that has any value. So it's kind of the opposite of, the, of a water line, unless it's set upside down, which I suppose is possible. So now we'll get this bolt out, pull the timing set out of it. Poor chain. Mm, that's one piece. Yep, that's never coming apart. And the cam plate. All right, before we pull this camshaft, we need to pull the oil pump. Let's get this oil pump off. And there's the, ooh, we're leaking all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. We're gonna try a little harder to get this cam out. Let's see. Man. That cam is in there. Yeah, I can't even budge the thing. No, that, that might not come out. Now we'll take apart the oil pump. Yuck. More yuck. Oh, it's making a giant mess. That's, that's not oil. There's the oil pump. We're gonna clean this up and take a look at what it looks like. The oil pump has a little bit of wear on the side, but it's really not too bad. I can do the best job cleaning this, but I don't see any major damage like a bunch of debris ran through here. All right, this is still very much locked up. So what I'm going to do is start removing the rod caps that I have access to in the order of cleanest cylinder to dirtiest cylinder. I, somehow that means we're going back to front. I, I just don't like it, but we do what we must do. Couple thunks. There's one cap. That is very much not wanting to move. See if we can get this bearing shell out of here. Actually, I probably should leave it. Also feels like the wrist pin is seized, which I'm not surprised. Very much locked up. Hey, we got one out. There's only seven more to go. I think the next one I'm going to try is this one right here. The only reason I say that is, it, while it is a little rusty, it is close to the top of the bore, so there's a lot less rust to fight. Wow. That's not doing a thing. Let's get my brass drift here. That's locked up very tight. I can get the cap off. That doesn't really help me. The idea was to move the rod and piston down in the bore, or up in the bore. I think I just push one of the studs out. Nope, we're moving. Yeah. A solid quarter inch of, of travel there. Here comes the cap. See if we can get it to move a little bit more. Oh, we're shooting shells. It's not looking pretty, guys. I mean, I suppose if I got all of the caps loose, I could pull the crank out and have a lot more access, but I getting all of the caps out, I just don't... There's a few in here that are just... We can try. I think that's going to be the next play. I guess we can start at the front, then. Sometimes you just got you to gotta force it. Wow, that's tight. But we win. Well, I say that. That might have been a mistake. It's not a flange nut, so this should be okay. See how this pans out for me here. Look at that. Success. That one actually moves pretty well. Does that one have rust in it? Oh, it's at the top of the bore. We're gonna get that one out. I knew I should have started at the front. Yeah, 
It appears we are stuck. Ah, the top of the rod cap is touching the bore. No such luck here. Let's go to the next one. All right, let's get to the next one. I think this one's gonna work with my wobble extension. When I say I think, I'm, what I really mean to say is I hope. I shouldn't have said anything. Whoa there. Oh, wow. We're just gonna force it on here gently. It's fine. You would do the same thing. Or you just walk away from this and throw the whole thing away. I'm not like that. I think we're going to be able to get this cap off. All right, just to recap, we have one rod and piston out. We have uh, two caps off, and we're working on the the next one. Now this one's going to be interesting because I have no idea how we're going to do that at all. Not even a little. I have ideas to try. However, uh, their success is going to be unfortunately not. That's not. Nope. That's nope. We're going to come back to that. Let's get, we have two more that we have easy access to, and then we're going to try to turn the crank rocket back and forth a little bit since it, uh, I don't know, we're just going to try stuff. Now we're just moving the, the studs. It's not what I wanted to do. We are making progress, I think. And let's see if this one will fight us. I don't think it will. Oh, come on now. Next, I'm gonna take the main caps off. Now we're gonna to try to roll this thing over using the big bar. The bolt on the crank is just not substantial enough. Look at that. Okay, now I can get to one more. It's much easier to get to now. That one actually moved pretty well. That's not a, not a very rusty cylinder. Now we've got one more cap to get loose. We try moving the crank the other way. It moved. Can almost get to it. Perfect. All right, now the problem is, is the wrist pins are all stuck. They're all frozen, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to... Yeah, that's not gonna come out on its own. It might work. It's a definite maybe. That wrist pin's a little loose. We're running out of ground here, guys. That one is rusted up incredibly solid. This one might come out, it's almost at the top of the bore but we're gonna run into the block. Man, the real problem is here and here, everywhere. Everywhere there could be a problem, with the exception of the one we got out. This set of journals is fine. The rest of them are, are a problem. We're doing stuff, making progress.
I think we're gonna get the crank out. Let's get some wood. All right, I'm gonna set this in a place where it can pop out right there. I think we can get this out. I'm gonna try pulling on it and see what happens. The wood fell out. Yes. Well, now that the crank's out, I can show you how stiff these are. Just... Okay, that one's decent. That one's in the middle of the other two. That one's not so bad. But now I know I can get a few more of these out. I'm gonna do this as gently as possible. And no, I'm not being sarcastic. And this one was uh, already most of the way out. Hey, that's two out of eight. Spray some more penetrator in here. I think this third one back we'll be able to get. This one, that is, uh, that's a tall order. I'm not very tall. <laughs> it's laughing at me. Let's see if I can get it to move down. That's a uh, big fat no. Oh, I could have gone without that. That was a mistake. Let's do it again. It is one with the cylinder. Machinist. That's doing very little, as expected. Well, it definitely smoothed out like the first two inches of it. So I guess it is helping. I think that's as good as she's going to get. I don't think this is going to help at all. We'll keep this over here for later. Let's get some more hammer behind it. Oh, I think it moved. I can't tell, guys. This is so rusty. This is definitely a lost cause. We're gonna break out the brass drift. Not my favorite tool for this type of job because it does mar up some stuff, but we gotta get these out. Now we're moving. Oh man. Well guys, I really don't like losing. I feel like I've lost, but I'm just going to totally ex expend a ton of energy to get a bunch of junk apart when it's all junk. I mean, maybe the block is salvageable. Maybe it just needs to be hot tanked, run through the wash. Maybe that'll loosen some things up. But this thing's been sitting so long with tons of moisture in it, can't get the cam out. Only got half the rods and pistons out. And yes, I probably could just aimlessly swing hammers and get the rest of this pulled apart, but why? Again, I don't like losing, but I am beat as it is. Let's go to these rod bearings. They are pretty worn. I think this was just a tired old truck engine. I mean, nothing's really torn up. They're all pretty evenly worn. I'm sure it had some oil pressure related issues. I mean, look at the bearings. And of the rods and pistons that we got out, uh, I think only one of them has a loose wrist pin. The rest of these are locked up solid. I mean, look, look at the barnacles on this thing. I mean, it, that takes a ton of moisture for a very long time to look like that. The pistons don't look too bad. I can't really see a reason as to why this thing was, uh, you know, why this was a quote unquote bad engine, aside from the fact that it's just totally rusted up. So maybe it was a flood, but I would think a flood would involve every single cylinder, not just some of them. And I didn't see any bent rods like it sucked in water. And if it did, it's just ever so slight. I, I, I don't think I'd be able to tell. A crank, it definitely has some wear. I probably need a polish, might need to be turned. 
I do not like the way I had to remove it at all. Uh, this is that's not the the rightest way. It's just the way that I did it. You get frustrated. You get to a point. I've already made my money on some of the external parts. It's probably the worst damage right there to the crank. Main bearings, pretty substantial wear on some of these shells, but nothing that's like, oh, well, that's why that's why this this was bad. I think this was a good engine, and then. They stored it somewhere near a waterfall or in a river. Maybe it was on the Titanic. Maybe it powered the Titanic. It makes enough torque. I don't really love tearing down engines that are this rusted up. The 454 I did that was kind of like this wore me out and I am extremely tired after this teardown as well. It's a lot of work to get these things apart and you have to draw a line in the sand as far as your effort because Yes, I think you could save the block. You could get all the components out of it and the block might be worth the effort, but I don't, I don't have the time or the gumption left to get this fully apart because I don't know what it's going to take. We may try later, but at the end of the day, I paid $150 for this engine and I know I can sell the lower intake manifold for more than that. So everything else that I got off of it that I can resell is just profit. And that's the goal here. That's the business here. I gotta keep the doors open and keep paychecks signed. I didn't see one single issue with this engine prior to the moisture or water, whatever happened there, that would have kept this engine from running. It did look kind of tired as far as the bearings were concerned. Maybe it had some oil pressure related issues, but the last time I tore down a small block Ford, it had worn bearings and you guys all said that looked great. Again, I didn't see anything that bad. And it's kind of a shame 351s are getting harder and harder to find. And this one's just so rough. I don't think the majority of it is worth anything. I don't think it's worth the machine work, but if you guys want to buy any parts out of this engine or anything else I've torn down, or if you want to buy parts out of this amazing hybrid Yukon, such a flop. I'm going to leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com. I've been uploading our parts cars every single week. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown as always. I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.